27. My brother passes away. When I heard that my only brother had come down with colon cancer, I couldn't believe it. I hurried up to Saul and rushed into his office. Upon seeing me, he started to cry. Tears rolling down his cheeks, he shouted, Why cancer? What have I done wrong? I have worked hard for my family, my country, and myself, he continued. I have been exercising regularly at the health club. I stopped smoking and drinking a long time ago. I said, Cheer up, brother. You may need a second opinion. Just do as a doctor advises you to do. I promised to buy him the best medicine to cure the incurable disease. From Japan and Brazil, I ordered medicine to kill the cancer cells in his body. My brother was trying to do anything he could do to be free from cancer. He read several books on cancer. He was so desperate that he even drank a glass of his own urine every morning, as a Japanese book suggested. He bought a special bed that heated his whole body two to three hours a day and took a natural medicine made from mushrooms. My brother was confident that he would live as long as his friends. He went to see his doctor once a month. Later, he had to see his doctor more often. Finally, he had to be hospitalized because he could not endure the pain caused by the cancer. The cancer cells grew to his neck. One evening, before my visit to the hospital, I spent the whole night singing the songs my brother and I used to sing together. Later, I recorded them on tape and took it to him. But I couldn't give him the tape because he was too weak to listen to it. As I was talking with him, the nurse came and gave him a painkiller. She was coming to him every 20 minutes. He was too sick to sit up. A month later, I was told that my brother would live. For only a few more days, I flew to be with him in the hospital. He was allowed to push a button that sent a painkiller into his body every six minutes. At about 11 o'clock that night, he passed away. He looked at his family and me right before darkness fell on him. My brother and I were different. He was very intelligent, he was very good at painting and playing basketball. He served in the Army as an ROTC officer. As a civil engineering graduate of Yongnam University, he worked for Hyundai Construction Company in Saudi Arabia, Libya, and Australia. He received numerous prizes from his company for his achievement. I once went up to Seoul to receive a prize from him, given by Im y o u n g b a k the president of Hyundai Construction Company, who later became the 17th president of South Korea. Now he's gone and I can't talk or sing with him anymore. I miss him and I'm sorry that I wasn't kinder to him while he was alive. He lived a full life, doing his best in everything he did. I took it as my duty to take care of his children until they can earn their own living. I supported both his two sons through college and Yong Sok, my brother's oldest son, until he finished graduate school. It is their own choice whether they will keep studying for doctoral programs or not. If they decide to keep studying, I will continue to pay for their tuition. My hope is that they will be healthy, wealthy, and happy in life. Yong Sok graduated with an MA in linguistics from Gyeongbuk National University, and I am very proud of him and his academic achievement. I hope that he will continue to study to receive his doctoral degree. In memory of my brother, I spent 50 million won to have a marble tomb built in my hometown, Chachon. In this way, I could keep his body and soul together. This place is where my parents and ancestors rest in peace. My wife and I shall be there when we leave this world for another world.